Es ist geschafft, Nicole, viermal Gold. Das gab es noch nie. Here I am with Hermann's Grand Gilbert out in the country. You can see how much we're enjoying it. A nice change at last from dressage riding. I think it's very important not to do dressage practice every day because it would probably be much too boring, both for me and the horses. And we'd most likely get worse rather than better. Um seine Trittsicherheit zu verbessern. I'm riding Hermann's Grand Gilbert through the forest here to improve his sure footedness. This helps to calm horses as well as making them more attentive. They learn to cope with surprising situations. Riding through the lake is one of the things we like doing best. You can see he's enjoying himself enormously. He walked into the water without any hesitation. For a change, I'm taking Hermann's Grand Gilbert over a ridge called the Wave. But I only do it at a walk because for a dressage horse, it would be very strange to canter up it and down again. Riding uphill is above all a strain on the hindquarter muscles. Right, and now as we come downhill, you can see very clearly how carefully Hermann's Grand Gilbert places one foot in front of the other. That's Donata, Hermann's Grand Gilbert's mother. She's being led by her breeder, Marion Heitzer. Here at the Warendorf stud is where Hermann's Grand Gilbert's sire lives, Glücksklee. German horse breeding has a long and successful tradition. Good riding horses are the result of selected sires and dams. These stud horses from the Warendorf stud in Westphalia are representatives of typical breeds. The German riding pony, Nibelungenheld. The Anglo-Arab, Monsieur. The thoroughbred, Northern Sound. The Westphalian, Funkenspiel. The Rhinelander, Ehrentusch. And the heavy horse, Herzbuber. You'll notice that all these stallions are very strong in appearance, masculine and highly typical. And of course, you'll also notice that they have unusually attractive temperaments and characters, because these two factors play a very important part in the selection of breeding stallions. Nibelungenheld is a typical representative of his breed, the German riding pony. In North Rhine-Westphalia, this breed plays an important role. We feel that the riding pony provides an excellent transition for children moving from small ponies to horses. Anglo-Arabs have been used for breeding riding horses for a very long time. We're currently trying to introduce more of their blood into our own breed, and we've certainly been lucky in acquiring Monsieur.
Northern Sound, too, is typical of his breed. He's a product of the finest bloodlines now used for breeding worldwide. Thoroughbreds are important for introducing qualities of refinement in horse breeding, qualities such as high performance, metal, rideability and good health. The Westphalian Funkenspiel is also highly typical of his breed. In recent years, he's been the winner at the North Rhine-Westphalian Stallion Show. He's the ideal model of what's nowadays expected of high-performance horses. The Rhinelander Ehrentusch is a rather heavier horse, but he's also very dynamic and he has a most interesting pedigree. We're certain his foals will be of very high quality. The heavy horse used to be predominant in horse breeding in this country. Now it's only used to a limited extent. In forestry, of course, and by people who keep them for pleasure to go out hacking. This stallion's reacting to an approaching mare. The breeder brings the mare to the stallion to see if she's ready for impregnation. Mares are only in heat, capable of fertilization on certain days. This mare isn't in heat. She kicks out strongly, rejecting the stallion's advances. At the second attempt, this mare tolerates the stallion's overtures and caresses. She keeps still. For the safety of both stallion and mare, this horsing test, as it's called, is always done with a barrier between them. Here, Schulter Böcker brings his stallion world champ to a mare. The mare is loosely held with ropes. This is for the safety of the stallion, the person holding him, and the breeder. The stallion and mare make contact by sniffing and nuzzling each other. This baring of the teeth shows the stallion's strong response to the mare's smell. When the stallion is roused, he mounts the mare. The stallion holder checks to see whether insemination is actually taking place. After covering, the stallion's led back to the stable. He's capable of serving several mares in a day. Whether this mare's now in foal or not isn't certain. She may need to be served again. In horse breeding, both natural mating and artificial insemination with fresh or deep frozen semen are practiced. The semen for this particular artificial insemination is kept deep frozen in liquid nitrogen. The semen, a very small quantity, is labelled with its donor stallion's name. 
the semen is warmed up and put in a hypodermic syringe. To avoid infection, the mare's vagina is cleansed. The insemination expert inserts the semen. Thanks to artificial insemination, successful sires can have a large number of descendants. But this method also has its dangers. Horse breeding associations should take care to see that the diversity of genetic information is preserved. When the moon's still in the sky, the foals are already moving about. They're only a few days old. They press close to their mothers, seeking their teeth. The mare knows that sensitive spot on the ear and nuzzles it. Horses are sometimes rough, but they can also be very gentle with one another. Although the foals can hardly stand as yet, they want to keep up. Under their mother's protection, their curiosity and their tremendous joy in movement are already developing. Even at a gallop, the newborn foal follows its mother. In a wild herd, this would be pure survival training. Movement is followed by a rest until the next dash starts. Movement is basic to the well-being of horses. It doesn't always require a rider. Direct access to a paddock from the stable for daily pasturing is especially good for stud horses like these Arab stallions in Marbach. It's important for both their mental and physical health. Horses can also simply be walked. Often it's quite simple solutions that clearly contribute to the general well-being of horses, particularly those involved in sport. Using a lunge, is a good way of schooling the movements of young horses without imposing the weight of a rider. It also accustoms them to daily work, to human beings and to their voices. Another way of satisfying a horse's urge for movement is a carousel like this, which can keep several horses moving at the same time. If horses are introduced slowly and gently to this kind of work, such equipment can be very useful. Stabling. There are various ways of keeping horses, different forms of stabling. In this long-established stable at Warendorf Stud, some of the stallions are housed in stalls. Good. 
they're tied up with a halter. This would seem to be in contradiction to their natural need for movement, but keeping them in stalls is no problem if they're given plenty of exercise, as is the case with riding school horses. And the horses can also move around and even lie down in these stalls. Young animals may be kept in a communal stable like this. This is a herd of colts at the Marbach stud. Although they've only just been separated from their mothers, they seem surprisingly calm. Foals can find new security in the company of others their own age. Only the arrival of a new colt causes a temporary disturbance until the question of status has been established. The loose box is the usual form of stabling for racehorses and adult stud horses. A box stall for a horse should be spacious and well ventilated and make allowances for its very inquisitive nature. For young horses, stabling that gives them free access to the open air is a good idea. In this case, part of the enclosure is roofed over, the rest is outside. This rougher way of keeping horses leaves them to find their own protection from wind and rain in outside temperatures. It helps make them resistant to illness. The longer I spend time with horses, the more interested I get in breeding. For the last six months, I've had my own foal, and I'm fearfully proud of him. He lives with his mother in stables belonging to my friend Marion Heitzer, who's also the breeder of Hermann's Grand Gilbert. Our first big public appearance was at the foal show, and I thoroughly enjoyed helping with the final preparations. I was really nervous about this unfamiliar task. Keeping both a mare and her foal in order isn't so easy. Yeah. <laughs> 